so good morning students so in the last class we were we were discussing about indicators of social empowerment so due to some technical error we were not able to complete the whole stuff so anyways i'll be just recapping the things which we discussed on that day okay so i'll just uh, recap the things so we were discussing about indicators of social empowerment in which this given like development is freedom as we were just discussing before itself what is development it is actually the freedom it is the freedom which is given to the people the people who are having freedom the country which is giving this their people the freedom and the right to choose the things then definitely that country is in the list of development okay freedom from hunger poverty servitude bondage ignorance illiteracy and many other forms of domination is the key to human development so what are the key to human development so the key to human development are freedom from hunger poverty servitude what is servitude it is to being in the condition of a slave bondage ignorance illiteracy and any other forms of domination that is the key to human development freedom in real sense of the term is possible only with the empowerment and participation of the people in the exercise of their capabilities and choices in the society so it is the participation of the people okay and the people who having the choices to choose that are the main things which are actually the main main things which have to be taken into account for development access to knowledge about the society and environment are fundamental to freedom so what is freedom like for what is freedom what are the things which are which comes under freedom they are they are the access to knowledge okay access to knowledge and the society and the environment that is the main thing which is needed over here so literacy is the beginning of access to such a world of knowledge and freedom so getting no, getting knowledge getting education being literate is the key for all these things okay so we will be just discussing we just discussed this thing okay we discussed about total condition of literacy rate in india so the literacy rate of india is 74.04 percentage into according to 2011 census okay but the female literacy is just 65.46 so it it can be just noted noted carefully that even the in, even india which is having 74.04 percentage of total literacy rate in which only 65.46 percent of um, uh, of females are just literate okay a country like india total literacy as well as female literacy is higher than the national average in most of the states from south india only in south india some states are there where we can just see that there is some what there is very much less gap between the female literacy and the total uh, literacy rate which is average literacy rate okay so there are wide regional disparities in literacy rate across states of india so when we take the states of india there is wide disparities in the case of literacy there are states where literacy rate is very high and there are states where literacy rate is very much low so for the for example we can just take a uh, state like bihar bihar's literacy rate is just 63.82 percentage whereas in kerala the literacy rate is 93.91 and mizoram it is 91.58 these two states are the top level when we consider the think of literacy okay and we can just note it down that bihar's literacy rate is just 63.82 percentage okay so apart from this thing if we just consider some people like in our society there are certain sections of people who are also deprived of this thing for example they may be uh, scheduled tribe scheduled caste females agricultural laborers and all they are also deprived of uh, this education stuff okay so this is what we discussed on that day so after that we discussed the human development index in india so we'll just go through that also okay so considering uh, human development of in index uh, human development index in india uh, in india also as is done in the world also in india in india also the states are uh, grouped under the case of development and in this context we can find that kerala with a composite index value of 0.790 comes in the topmost level and after that delhi then himachal pradesh goa and punjab as expected states like bihar odisha chatisgarh are at the bottom as expected because it's always expected so these three states 
are having very much literacy rate and also economic development is also very much low because of these reason they these states are at the bottom okay so here uh, here is a here is a newspaper cutting you guys have to read this out and you have to find this solution also okay now we'll just move to next there are several socio political economic and historical reason for such a state of affairs so we'll be just thinking that yeah india is a country yeah there is unity and diversity fine we all know that but why some states are having very much high in high human development index value and some are having very low human development index and value so the reason is there are many historical reason and also socio political economic reason Kerala is able to record the highest value in the HDI largely due to its impressive performance in achieving nearly 100% literacy. So, what is the reason why Kerala is at the top level of Human Development Index? The reason is they are very good in education. The literacy rate in Kerala is much higher than all these states. Okay, they have done uh, Kerala. Kerala have done very good in the. field of education giving literacy means giving education access to education in kerala is very much high when considered to other states in different scenario the states like bihar madhya pradesh odisha assam uttar pradesh have very low literacy in the same way the states like bihar madhya pradesh odisha assam and uttar pradesh have very low literacy rate so literacy rate access to education is a important criteria for calculating human development states showing higher total literacy rates have less gaps between male and female literacy rate in the same way the states where literacy rates is high means in a good level those states have very much less gaps between the literacy rate among male and female population so we can just take an example of kerala Kerala the male literacy rate is 90 Kerala male literacy rate is male literacy rate is 96.1 96.1 okay this is in Kerala and so in Kerala the male literacy rate is 96.1 and female literacy rate is 92. Seven, so you can see the difference. It is just around three point something. Okay, and if when we just consider the case of Mizoram, that is Mizoram. Mizoram also, the situation is somewhat same only. The total male literacy male literacy of Mizoram is ninety three. Male is ninety three point three five, and female literacy rate is eighty nine point two seven. 89.27 okay mizoram male literacy rate is 93.35 and female literacy rate is 89.27 here also difference is much low okay only uh, around 3 point something so the gap between the male and female literacy is much lower in these two states and we know that they are the states where the literacy rate is much higher and if we just take the case of bihar which are, which is in the bottom of literacy level when we take the case of india in bihar total uh, male literate is 71.71.20 and female uh, female population that is female literate ra literacy rate is 51.50 51. 50 so here you can just see that the total difference you can just imagine the total difference is more than 20 percentage or 19 point something right so this is the gap which we seen in bihar okay this is in bihar so from this uh, numbers we can just understand that the states having total where, where the states having total literacy rate is high in the same states the gap between the male and female literacy would be very small in the same way the states having very less literacy rate the gap between the male and female literacy would be much higher okay now 
apart from the educational attainment the levels of economic development to play an important role economic development also play an important role in hdi economically developed states like maharashtra tamil nadu punjab haryana have higher value of hdi when we compare them with chatisgarh bihar madhya pradesh the states having better economic economic situation like their financial status is better than some other states like chatisgarh bihar madhya pradesh they don't have much economic development when which when we just compare them with maharashtra tamil nadu and punjab so that reason make these states like maharashtra tamil nadu punjab and haryana much higher in hdi index rather than these states because in these states economical development is due to the agricultural production the industrial development and uh, lots of factories lots of mills and steel industries are located in this area okay uh, and this chatisgarh bihar madhya pradesh their total uh, per capita income is much lesser than all the above mentioned states regional distortions and social disparities which developed during the colonial period continue to play an important role in the indian economy polity and society so the regional distortions and the social disparities which were developed during the colonial time like when india was a colony of britain from that time there is a so there are social disparities there are regional distortions those problems still prevail in many of the states which are hindering the development okay the same way the government of india has made concerted efforts to institutionalize uh, the balance between development with its main focus on social distributive justice through planned development it has made significant achievements in most of the field but these are still below the desired level yeah there are lots of policies there are lots of programs which are being developed by our government so as to bring that development process to all the states to bring that social inequality and make that distribution equal to every everyone in the country but still there are lots of drawbacks okay now now we will be moving to our next topic which is population environment and development guys we are uh taking the chapter from indian people and economy human development chapter we are discussing okay now development in general and human development in particular is a complex concept used in social sciences so these chapters are being used used by social sciences okay it is complex because for ages it was thought that development is a substantive concept and once it is achieved it will address all the socio cultural and environment ills of the society so it was believed that by attaining a certain stage of development it would automatically it will automatically provide uh what to say an achievement or it will address the problems of social society culture and also the environment so it was believed like that but actually it is not the right thing it was not the truth yeah there are lots of developments after there 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 is there are there is the process of development is going on and this development have paved way to many good things in the same way there are many things which are not coming under this particular development strategies though development has brought in significant improvement in the quality of life in more than one way but increasing regional disparities social inequalities discriminations deprivations displacement of people abuse of human rights and undermining human values and environmental degradation so yeah development has come but this development has paved way to some other problems one of the important problem is discriminations regional disparities displacement of people abuse of human rights rights undermining of human values and the most important one environmental degradation that we can see around us all these things are we can just say that are an outcome of so called development okay so considering the gravity and sensitivity of the issue involved undp you know the full form of undp it is united nation development program okay so they have they have given a report in 1993 which which used or which amended many things which have to be changed which have to be changed so as to get a better 
picture of the development so we can just see to it okay so considering the gravity and sensitivity of the issues involved the UNDP in its human development report 1993 tried to amend some of the implicit biases and prejudices which were entrenched in the concept of development so they asked so there were some biases and prejudices okay in the case of development issues so these things were amended by UNDP okay it also emphasized on progressive democratization and increasing empowerment of people as minimum condition for human development so what is the main base what is the main base of human development so the main base of human development is social empowerment people should be empowered they should be given access they should be given that that what to say that freedom that freedom and the democracy you know we are living in a democratic country so there are many countries which are not following the same thing which our country follows so that democratization should come the people should have the right to choose who they want who are going to rule them what their country needs so these things are the minimum condition for human development the report recognized greater constructive role of civil societies what are civil societies actually civil societies uh societies comprised of some groups uh, or organization working in the interest of the citizen they are working <coughs> in the interest of citizen they are not linked to the government they are actually not working for government or anything like that so for example we can say activist groups uh, charitable trusts um, cooperatives then clubs then um, cooperations you know cooperative societies and all you know the so all those things comes under civil societies these civil societies have a <coughs> sorry these societies have a uh, better role to play in the case of human development they can work for peace and human development the civil society should work for building up opinion for reduction in the military expenditure demobilization of armed forces transition from defense to production of basic goods and services and particularly disarmament and reduction in the nuclear warheads by developed countries so the civil societies they have a major role to play in a, in in a government okay in in governing okay for so they can just give opinion they can just provide opinion in the case of military expenditure many countries are spending lots of money for their military the same way demobilization of armed forces armed forces should be mobilized okay that is very much important okay the same way transition from defense to production of basic goods means most of the countries are spending lots of money for their defense purposes they are buying big bombs biological weapons nuclear weapons atom bombs big jet planes and uh, war war stuff and all that money can be used for buying basic goods which are need for the people for the welfare of the people those money can be used in the same way disarmament and reduction the nuclear warheads all the countries are having nuclear bombs with us with them even a country which is very much poor a underdeveloped country is where they are not having uh, basic necessities of life the people are deprived of their basic necessities those countries are also having nuclear bombs with them so a simple problem a small problem between two countries happens and if any of the country is using nuclear bombs definitely the result will be a big nuclear explosion all over the world and it can cause a nuclear war also which can end the whole world so all these things have to be neutralized okay they have to be controlled for those purpose all these civil societies can play a big role in a nuclearized world peace and well being are major global concern so in a nuclearized world i, I was just talking about this because all the countries are having nuclear stuff with them so in this world making peace is very difficult so these societies can come together and can work for it at the other extreme of this approach lie the views of neo malthusians environmentalists and radical ecologists who are neo malthusians they are actually the people who advocate that human population planning to ensure resources and environmental integrity for current and uh, future human population as uh, as well as for other species they just believe that the resources uh, which we are using today have to be safeguarded for the future generation also and also for other species of the 
world. In the same way, environmentalists also have the same thing to say. And what are radical ecologists? Actually, radical ecologists are of the view that environmental problems can only be solved by a radical uh, recession of attitudes and values rather than through economic and political reforms. So uh, political reforms and economical reforms are not going to solve these environmental problems. So we have to look onto it through a radical view. Those are radical ecologists. So they believe that for a happy and peaceful social life, proper balance between population and resources is necessary. So balance between the population and resources is very much necessary for a peaceful social life. According to these thinkers, the gap between the resources and population has widened after 18th century. After 18th century, the, the balance between the resources and population have widened. What would be the reason? Definitely population explosion and exploitation of our resources. So, it is written that there have been marginal expansion in the resources of the world in the last 300 years, but there has been phenomenal growth in the human population. Yeah, there is just a marginal increase in the resources which we have. There are renewable resources, non-renewable resources. Okay, these resources have just marginally increased, but the population, population has increased in a much higher level. Development has only contributed in increasing the multiple uses of the limited resource of the world, while there has been enormous increase in the demand for these resources. The development which we are talking about has made way for the usage of resources in a much higher level. The exploitation of these resources have been increased due to development, but those resources are very much limited. The population explosion and the development has made way for this change. Therefore, the prime task before any development activity is to maintain parity between population and resources. So there should be a balance between the population and the resources. Scholars like Robert, Sir Robert Malthus was the first one to voice his concern about the growing scarcity of resources as compared to the human population. So the first person who made, uh, who advocated or who just uh, insisted the importance of making a balance between the growing population and resources was Sir Robert Malthus. He was an English scholar, okay. So he was the first person who had this concern. Apparently this argument looks logical and convincing, but a critical look will reveal certain intrinsic flaws such as resources are not a neutral category. Yeah, resources are not neutral category, okay. It is not the availability of resources that is as important as their social distribution. Availability of resources is important, but rather than that, the distribution of resources, because the resources are not distributed equally, okay, they are not distributed equally. In plus, in one place, the uh, resources available would be high, and some place there won't be any such resources. <coughs> Resources everywhere are unevenly distributed. Rich countries and people have access to large resource baskets while the poor find their resources shrinking. Yeah, that's a reality. Rich countries and people have access to large resources, but poor people just find their resources shrinking day by day. Moreover, unending pursuit for the control of more and more resources by the powerful and use of the same for exhibiting one's uh, proofs is the prime cause of conflicts as well as the apparent contradictions between population resource and development. Because in some developed countries what they do, they just overcome, uh, overpower some poor countries. They will just go to their country and they will just buy lots of lands where resources are in, uh, are very, are in very high uh, percentage and they will just uh, extract the resources of other country and they will just use for their benefits. So this is happening all over the world, okay. So this have to be reduced. These are also the reasons for many unpeaceful uh, uh, happenings uh, over the world. So now talking about India, Indian culture and civilization have been very sensitive to these issues of population resource development for a long time. So when taking the case of India, India Indian culture even say to protect nature, to conserve resources and all. It would not be incorrect to say that the ancient scriptures were essentially concerned about the balance and harmony among the 
elements of nature even the uh, even the uh, ancient scriptures you know and we just check check them out we can just find that they they want an harmony between humans and nature they always try to uh, give importance to the mother nature <coughs> Mahatma Gandhi in the recent times advocated the reinforcement of harmony and balance between the two. Okay, now Mahatma Gandhi, you know, he always, uh, he always wanted, he always wanted an harmony between nature and humans. He gave important to, importance to that uh, nature. He was quite apprehensive about the ongoing development, particularly the way industrialization has institutionalized the laws of moral morality spirituality self reliance non violence mutual cooperation and environment so uh, mahatma gandhi thought that the uh, industrialization or the development what we say which is going on has in one way has made way for losing of many values which were there in indian culture those values are not given that much of importance due to this institutionalization okay due to this industrialization many changes have happened for example uh, loss of morality spirituality self reliance non violence now we can see violence everywhere non violence <coughs> is just a thing which is in only in papers okay so that's the thing <coughs> in this opinion austerity for individual that is attitude and trusteeship of social wealth what is trusteeship actually trusteeship was uh, is an uh, socio economic philosophy which was brought up by which was propounded by mahatma gandhi uh, what does it mean that uh, it means that um, the people who are wealthy the people who are rich they have to spend the money which they have and for the welfare of the people so that a rich guy should help a poor one so that is the thing in which the person who is rich is the trustee he have to work for the people who are poor or who are in need so that is the case of trusteeship it is a philosophy which was propounded by mahatma gandhi in his opinion austerity for individual the attitude or the outlook of the people trusteeship of social wealth and non violence and non violence are the key to attain higher goals in the life of an individual as well as that of a nation so what are the key features or key features which are needed for attaining a higher goals of an individual or of a nation by mahatma gandhi is non violence trusteeship of social wealth austerity for individual his views were also re echoed in the club of rome reports limits to growth 1972 shoemaker's book small is beautiful 1974 the brundtland's commission's report our common future 1987 and finally in the agenda 21 report of the rio conference 1993 so as mahatma gandhi is a person he is a great philosopher he is a great, great human lover in the same way he loved his nature in the nature also a person like that his words his his um, theories his philosophies were even used by most of these uh, organizations most of these committees most of these meetings conferences and all even in books these ideas were used so we can just understand that yeah this stuff got fire right this is the thing which is the key thing behind all the development which is needed for humans as well as for the mother nature so this is all about the chapter i uh, hope you guys uh, understood the chapter we were discussing about human development in the case of indian scenario in indian scenario so this chapter is over now you have exercises to complete i want you guys to complete this chapter uh, chapters exercises uh, you guys have to write down um, these two exercises in your uh, notebooks uh, i have already given you the answers and uh, the notes of this chapter will be uh, sent to you soon the chapter which we have discussed before which was human development from the uh, book fundamentals of human geography hope you have received the notes for to that chapter i want you guys to read those notes thoroughly okay in the same way you guys have to read the textbook also the textbook which we have underlined you have to read the textbook the underlined stuff you have to read thoroughly in the same way the notes which i have sent you that also you have to read it thoroughly the note for this 
chapter will be sent uh, will be sent today you have to read that and tomorrow we will be having an interaction session with you guys i'll be having an interaction session with you guys where i will be asking some questions to you and you must uh, you have to you have to try to answer that so that for that purpose you guys have to do the th do this thing so for now uh, it's okay so we'll be seeing tomorrow take care goodbye